Factsverse presents The Underwater Cemetery That NASA Doesn't Want People to Know About. But we're going to tell you anyway. First, though, help us spread the word about Facts First by clicking that like button. Also, be sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you don't miss our future videos. For the past six decades, countries from all over the world have been exploring outer space. And there are plenty of things that we don't know about what lies beyond Earth's atmosphere. Between the black holes, other galaxies, supernovas, dark matter, it's no wonder that we're sending ships into space to see what mysteries will unfold. You ever wondered what happens to spaceships and satellites when they're no longer necessary or operable? Well, these pieces of machinery they weigh hundreds of tons, except in space where they're weightless, of course. So where do objects this large go when we no longer need them? Well, there is a place that they all go. It's the underwater cemetery that NASA doesn't want you to know about. It exists out in the middle of the ocean. Just beyond New Zealand, is a stretch of ocean known as the South Pacific Ocean Uninhabited Area, or SPAWA. Most nations around the world they use this same name for the stretch of ocean, and they also know it as the Spaceship Cemetery. For nearly 50 years, this has been the final resting place for spacecraft from various countries. There's a reason that experts have chosen this particular area. The coordinates are 43 degrees 34 minutes 48 seconds south by 142 degrees 43 minutes 12 seconds west. It's also known as Point Nemo, named after Nemo for 20,000 leagues under the sea. More importantly, it's Earth's sole oceanic point of inaccessibility. Spawa is the single point in the ocean that is the furthest away from land on all sides. It's located between the Ducey Island and the Pitcairn Islands, Matanui of the Eastern Islands, and Maher Island off Antarctica. The stretch of sea is located over 1,600 miles from shore. That makes this the perfect place to send those out-of-commission spaceships because people don't travel through these waters because of the distance from land. And that's important because nobody wants to risk human life. While the area is often clear of ships, there are some who pass through the area from time to time. Fortunately, space organizations are very careful about that. Before a ship is going to be sent to the underwater graveyard, a notice is sent well in advance. And that gives ship's captains an idea of when it is safe to pass and when it's not. The spacecrafts that are under the water of Spawa were not taken there by ship or taker. They were sent to the area straight from space. That should tell you it's not as easy as it might seem. The pilots who get these crafts to Earth first use the ship's remaining fuel supply. Next, they have to steer the ships toward Earth's re-entry point. When the crafts reach the Earth's atmosphere, there is dense gas which causes a great deal of friction. Most of that ship disintegrates because of that. The rest is buried under the water. Now, To help you put things into perspective, the massive Mir space station it weighed 143 tons when it was launched. When it reached the water, it only weighed 25 tons. That's how much of it was burned away. The Mir is just one of these spacecrafts that lie on the ocean floor. There are also six Salyut stations, the Russian Progress cargo craft, the Japanese H-2 transfer vehicle, and the ESA's Jules Verne ATV. There's a reason we don't simply blast these unnecessary spacecrafts out of the Earth's atmosphere. It takes a lot of fuel to get ships into space. It would need a lot more to get them out of the Earth's atmosphere. Even if we had an unlimited supply of fuel, there's no guarantee that they wouldn't find their way back. Spawa is considered the safer, more practical way to lay our spacecrafts to rest, at least for now. Because Spawa spans thousands of ocean miles, we don't really need to worry about running out of space anytime soon. We don't put ships under the water in that area on a daily basis, so there's really plenty of room. With all the mysteries associated with space, though, it's kind of nice to have at least one answer, huh? You know now where the ships end up. It might sound strange to take ships from space and send them to one of the deepest areas of Earth, but, well, it works. It's better than leaving them in space, hoping that they will stay there forever, intentionally sending them down to Earth in a place that's rarely passed by humans that's both the safest and most effective way to put these ships to rest. We don't know when the next ship will be laid to rest here, but we do know that it will happen again someday. Now you know, and don't tell NASA that I told you. Subscribe for more!